Hey there, Dan Martell here, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you how to collect more product reviews without being that annoying asker so that you can get more distribution, more people aware of your product, and essentially get more customers. Be sure to stay to the end where I'm gonna share with you this exclusive resource called the Review Collector Maximizer to help you get the list of all the top sites to publish to and the strategies when and where to ask. Let's get into it. So one of the key beliefs I have in life is show, don't tell. I believe it's better for your customers to tell the market how great you are, not you to tell them. So let the customers show um, how amazing your product is. Don't be the person always you know, screaming and saying, we're the best, we're the best, we're the best. To do that, we wanna collect reviews. There has been this insurgence in review sites that are incredible for SEO, so I get why they've built them. But it's just allowing customers to make decisions faster, compare different products, different solutions against each other in regards to feature sets and costs and kind of like uh, different types of companies that would use different solutions. So there's these review sites. We've always had reviews, you know, Yelp, Google reviews, et cetera, but now they're coming into the business category. And as a coach, I've seen many of my clients using reviews to drive, especially some of these new sites like G2 Crowd, et cetera, to really drive demand and volume for their signups, trials, and demos. So I wanna share with you how um, they've been doing that to collect the most reviews and be really strategic about it and just give you some thoughts on how you can leverage those reviews to get even more value out of it. I've always done this in my company's Clarity, my previous company. Uh, we essentially ask for a review post call on every call and we use that to actually drive SEO as well. Reviews and Q&A are great SEO drivers. That's why these sites have sprung up, but there are some very specific best practices that you need to use to make sure you get out the most out of customer reviews. Number one, we need to capture the feedback. We need to capture the review. Now, the key is, is we don't want angry people, frustrated people leaving reviews on these sites. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna kinda, you know, um, cue it up the right way. So the way we do that is, you know, in different interactions, you know, after they've been a customer for a few weeks, maybe after they've emailed support and they had a good experience, um, maybe we just, you know, send it to everybody that, you know, attended in our customer conference, whatever it is. Anytime we have the opportunity to ask our customer for feedback, typically through a customer satisfaction survey or a net promoter score. So there's a bunch of online tools that I'm gonna tell you how to, you know, be aware of in a second um, that allow you to automate this whole process. But the cool part is, is step one, you can filter, only the positive reviews and then guide those, those, those answers or those people that left those reviews to drive to uh, different review sites so you can load balance. If you feel like you've got a ton of reviews on this site, you wanna kind of move people over there. Or maybe certain reviews make more sense depending on a feature they're using within your product and you can guide them. But number one is we need to capture them. Post support calls, in email, asking on support calls, um, you know, NPS surveys, et cetera. Capture the feedback. Number two is we need to craft our profile. As I mentioned, I'm gonna give you a list of the top 12 review sites for B2B SaaS, but each one of them has a profile page. Here's the key. We need to make sure that the images are good. So hire or hire a designer, hopefully you have a designer, and tell them like really craft really great images. The copy on those pages, the, the description of your solution and who you solve it for, all of those things should not be taken for granted because if you do it right, you will get hundreds of views on your profile page every month. We wanna make sure that it speaks directly to your core customer. It, quickly connects with them on what value you provide, what sol uh, problems you solve in the market with your solution, and gets them to clearly take the next action item that you want, typically trial, uh, demo, or maybe a sales conversation for a proof of concept. Regardless, we wanna make sure we craft our profiles to the world class. Number three, we need to grease the flow. So what happens is often many of these review sites have category or subcategory pages that um, end up in search results or allow you to kind of like drill down. So you might have like a CRM solution, but one of those uh, components could be automated uh, email campaigns. So you have a subcategory for that page. So you actually need to um, create a separate landing page. So I have a client and they are driving 30, 40% of their demand every month through review sites. And the reason why is they have seven distinct categories that they're listed in these different review sites because their product's pretty broad 
uh, depth of, of features. And they have a, a, a custom landing page for each one of those subcategory pages to link to to capture the lead. So if you don't know, check out those subcategory pages. Make sure that the, the, the capture form, the lead collect uh, landing page from those subcategory pages is going to a custom landing page so that you can speak specifically to that customer's pain, how your, your product solves it and get them into your trial or your demos. Number four, leverage reviews. Here is the fun part, you know, and you've maybe been to a restaurant and you see like, you know, awards on a wall and just like, man, look at all these awards. This place is gonna be amazing, right? So the way I think about it is the same principles apply. So the more reviews we show, the more reviews we'll get. So it's kind of like speaking. The more I speak, the more speaking engagements I get, okay? So reviews are the same thing. So pepper them all over your website. Um, use them in your content marketing. If you're writing a blog post, you know, use your customer reviews in there. On your features page specifically, if you can have a review that, that speaks to a specific feature that they use to get a result, um, attach it to the feature on the feature page. Um, sales team, making sure that you arm your sales team with specific use cases and reviews. Um, using the reviews to create case studies um, so you can create more in-depth case studies of the customer's outcome. Um, and just really sharing it with the team for wins. I think there's so much opportunity to leverage reviews to get way more value that a lot of companies don't even know these things are going on. They, they're getting reviews every, hopefully every day, every week, but they don't even share it with the team at a minimum. Um, to me, that's a huge opportunity to celebrate and they don't look at it to way to kind of cross pollinate different, you know, marketing or sales artifacts that you're generating so that you can help those sales motions move more efficiently. Number five, maintain momentum. So you've got reviews, you understood how to capture your segmenting, your prompting, you've got all that uh, in the flow, but for some reason, you know, you change providers, you stop doing it. And here's what happens, or you forget to update sites. Uh, if I go to a review page and the last review is from last year, that tells me that maybe people in your customer base have moved on to a better product and I'm just not aware of it, so I'm gonna go do more deeper research. So when I say maintain momentum, I mean asking yourself, does this page look fresh? If I go to this review site, are there enough reviews? Is there only two and my competitor has 100? You know, and then that way you can just strategically continue to prompt and load balance where the reviews are being left so that you can ensure that you're maintaining that momentum in regards to having your customers tell your story. You know, to me, it's again, show, don't tell, have them communicate, make sure those pages are fresh with updated reviews so that you can keep that momentum and lead gen going. So quick recap, five ways to get more product reviews without being annoying. Number one, we wanna capture feedback overall and then prompt to leave reviews. Two, craft our profiles, make them beautiful. Three, grease the flow, make sure our landing pages match our message. Four, leverage reviews all over the place, sprinkle it, pepper them across your sales and marketing. And five, maintain momentum so your pages look fresh. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I wanna share with you an exclusive resource called the Review Collector Maximizer. On there, I have a whole list of prompts, where to ask for feedback, aka reviews. Also, the key tools that you should be using to capture those reviews. There's a bunch of different software out there. And then also the top 12 sites that you need to be publishing your reviews on depending on the category of your product. But click the link below to download your Review Collector Maximizer worksheet to help you kind of make that more efficient, actually build a strategy map as well, that's part of it, and just get the key sites that you need to focus on to drive awareness and demand for your product. If you found this video useful, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel. If there's anybody you think this video could serve, feel free to share it with them directly. And as per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. Cheers. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. This is my Christmas sweater, ha ha.